Hello and welcome everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you for joining today's webinar on developing mathematical mindset in students. My name is Ravali and I'm a part of team here at Tiruto. I am joined here by our today's speaker, Mr. Vasu, head of international one-on-one -on -one tutoring services at Tiruto and Ms. Priyanka from student consular department. This webinar is a part of outreach program by Tiruto for the students who are looking for a bright future and parents who are dreaming of giving their children the best education. Before we start off, let me give a quick overview of Tiruto. Tiruto is an innovative e-learning platform in a mission to make a education accessible to all. I now, Tirito is present in USA, Canada, Middle East, India, Singapore, and Australia regions. And programs offered by Tirito are NAPLAN OC and one-on-one -on -one tutoring services for math, science, and English subjects in Australia region. And how do we differentiate from other edtech platforms which are currently available? Tirito is a exclusively gives access to one live and interactive one on one classes which are personalized to the custom needs of the students session sessions whenever needed for making their concepts and basics stronger also parent app access to make you part of child's learning journey moreover we have top 2% certified educators whom we partner with to envision our mission Before getting into the specific, let me offer a quick introduction about our today's speaker at today's event. Mr. Vasu is holder of Master of Mathematics and Bachelor of Education. He has 30 plus years of profound experience in teaching mathematics for natives and international students as well. Also, more than 80 plus, 80,000 plus students qualified for IIT entrance and more than 4,000 plus for ACT and SAT top scorers under his guidance. And I request all the parents, if you have any queries during the session, please feel free to type them in Q&A section. We shall be an answering the questions later part of the session. And thank you. We'll now have Vasu sir to take the session on the topic. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ravali. Hi, all. A warm welcome to everyone. Now, first, we will discuss about introduction to Max. Mathematics is a powerful tool that helps to understand the world, encourages logical reasoning, critical and creative thinking, and problem solving ability. Even though everyone learns mathematics at school, it is difficult to define exactly what mathematics is. Clearly, numbers, shapes, and equations form part of it, but only a small part compared to the vast space of mathematical concepts and ideas. The best way to understand what mathematics is and what mathematicians work on is to do mathematics. One idea that appears everywhere is mathematics is abstraction. Instead of thinking about particular numbers, shapes, equations, or any other objects, mathematicians tend to think about their underlying structures and patterns. This means that the results called theorems are more general and provide deeper insight. Another fundamental idea is mathematics is proof. Mathematicians can't just say that an idea is true or test in a few cases. They need a rigorous and watertight argument to decide that it is always true. Maybe this makes mathematics more difficult than other sciences, but it also means that mathematicians can obtain absolute and definite knowledge, which is possible in any other discipline. Despite being so abstract and so theoretical, mathematicians has countless applications in every possible aspect of life. Without mathematics, our civilization would be little more advanced than the ancient Egyptians. 
we don't have governments funded by a tax system, no phones, no televisions, no computers, no internet, and no satellite navigation. The cultural value and the monetary economic value of mathematics are too large to measure. Now, moving ahead. Origin of maths. Mathematics originated from the Greek word, meaning tendencies to learn. Multiple branches, numbers, geometric forms, algebra, and others. The origin of mathematics accompanied the evolution of social systems. Many social needs required calculations and numbers. Conversely, the calculation of numbers enables more complex relations and interactions between peoples. Numbers and calculations with them require a well-organized operational system. Such systems were perhaps the earliest models of complex rigorous systems. As we will see, not just one, but several number systems come, come to us from antiquity. However, and interesting as the basic notions of counting may be, the origins of mathematics include more than just enumeration, counting, and arithmetic. Now, moving ahead, Max in daily life. Now, the study of measurements, numbers, and space. Max plays a vital role in all aspects of daily life. Examples, time tracking, driving, cooking, or jobs like accounting, finance, banking, engineering, and software. Mathematics is very useful in everyday life. We use Max concepts as well as the skills we learn from practicing math problems every day. Mathematics is important for all professions in the world. Every aspect of life is highly dependent on the use of numbers and arithmetic. Mathematics is the language of science. It is used to develop the rest of science and interpret its theories, especially physics, chemistry, astronomy, geography, etc. It enables thinkers to test their ideas by doing many experiments. Now moving ahead. Understanding the basic concepts in lower grades. The basic concepts are the foundation to see through max right from lower grades. If the basic concepts are understood by a child, is or a journey in mathematics will be made easy. For example, right from the lower grades, he understands what is number system. Now in number system, you have, what are the numbers you have, what are the place values, face values, all these. And then they start with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, knowing about prime numbers, composite numbers, what are natural numbers, whole numbers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, put together complex numbers. Now, as they move ahead in the higher grades, they get complex numbers, which is the biggest system. And then they will understand what is algebra. In algebra, one must know about what do you mean by a variable? What do you mean by a coefficient? What is a constant? What is an expression? And what is an equation? Then as he moves to the upper grades, he will learn about geometry. In geometry, first they'll understand what do you mean by a point? What is a line? What is a ray? What is a line segment? Then angles. What are angles? What are the various different types of angles? Parallel lines, triangles, polygons. So all this right from the lower grades to the higher grades, you will understand what, is, what are these geometry, algebra, number system. Now, these are the fundamental to mathematics. Now, when he understands the concepts better in lower grades, now what they have to do is he has to write a formula book. A formula book is needed. Now, why it is needed? Now, see, he learns about, uh, for example, in geometry, we'll learn about some, what do you mean by 
corresponding angles, alternate angles, interior angles, all this stuff you will understand. In algebra, you will understand some formula, algebraic formula. What do you mean by A plus B the whole square? What is A minus B the whole square? All these things you will understand. All these formula, if you can write in a formula book, then you can revise well all this without seeing also if he writes, then you can uh, understand what are the concepts he has learned in the class. So that formula book is needed for a student. And the second thing is have a practice of writing all these formulae without seeing, then he can actually correct himself and then he can check whether he has understood all the concepts or not. Now, after understanding these basic concepts in lower grades, next moving ahead, how to develop skill in fast calculations. Now, fast calculations are very important for a student because in near future, when he goes for any type of uh, examination where it is a time-bound examination. So that's why in right from lower classes, you must have some speed rules. Now speed rules in adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, all these, uh, if you can uh, do speed rules, you will understand how fast you can do all these calculation, but it also includes multiplication tables. So one must know the multiplication tables, at least uh, if you say, uh, for example, two times one, from two times one, if you start, it must be up till two times two, well, that would be benefited for the student. So all the multiplication tables and having some speed rules in addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, then, uh, then he will understand how fast he can do a given problem then the child has to think more of what must be added. For example, if I have six, what must be added to six to get 10? Or what must be added to 54 to get 100? So like that, some problems, if it does, then you will understand uh, the beauty in fast calculation. A good calculation speed always comes handy while solving max problems. Often students seem to understand the concepts of uh, various chapters, but still they cannot score well in their math examination. One of the major problems with many students is keeping up the pace during the exam. Mostly students who are not uh, fast with calculations tend to mess up with the sums in the later part of the question paper in a max examination. Once they start realizing that they are lagging behind during an examination, they, are, they start rushing and end up making mistakes. So this is what it happens. So that's why fast calculations are needed for the student. Moving ahead, understanding the correlation in some concepts. Now, this is very important for a student. Now, right from the lower grade, a student can correlate between fractions, decimals, and percentages. This is the first correlation subject which you can understand. So for example, if I have 10%, he must know that 10% is nothing but one by 10, one over 10. This is 0.1 as a decimal. Now, for example, if you have 20%, 20% is nothing but it is 0.2, or as a fraction, it is a 20 over 100, which is one over five. Now 25%, it is one fourth, or it is 0.25 as a decimal. Now, for example, if you have 33 one third percent, now it is nothing but one third, or it is 0.33 recurring. So these, when he understands what is the correlation between these, it will be very easy for the student to calculate it fast when a problem is given. Now, this is in lower grades, you will understand this particular concept. Now, as it moves into higher grade, now what where correlation can be done? Now, the correlation can be done in 11th and uh, 12th grades in vectors and three-dimensional geometry. Now, actually in three-dimensional geometry, we say direction cosines. Now, what are direction cosines in vectors? It is nothing but a unit vector. So like that, he, he has to understand 
the correlation between these, the vectors and three-dimensional geometry, you can put a lot of correlations in planes, lines, all concepts you can correlate the subject. Now, for example, he learns about system of equations that are subjects. Now, in system of equations, actually, we, when a system of equation is given, we can understand what do you, how do we get a unique solution, that is one solution, or infinitely many solutions. If it is given in two variables, uh, three variables also, you have a correlation and no solution. Let us suppose he has given in two variables, means you have two equations given in two variables like this. Then this can be correlated with the subject of, if the lines are intersecting, you have a unique solution. If they are coincident lines, you have infinitely many solutions. If they are parallel, you have no solution. So this subject of system of equations for the consistency and inconsistency, these two are consistent and this is inconsistent. So this can be correlated with a line concept. Now like this, the correlation exists between in higher grades, 11th and 12th grades, if you see, there is a correlation between functions and calculus. Now, if a function is one, one function, the student will understand whether it is a strictly increasing or strictly decreasing function. These concepts are needed in the applications of calculus. So that's why there exists a correlation right from the lower grades to the higher grades. So this correlation must be understood by a student. Then moving ahead, Now, need to have skills and short tips in some concepts. Now, why this is needed? Now, if the concepts are digested in a simpler manner, now for every concept you can understand by a real world life example, then there will not be any waste of time in a time-bound examination where you can, where you can solve a problem very easily. Now, for example, uh, we have factorization. Let us suppose we take x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now, a student has to develop the skill or the short tip of breaking this function into two linear factors. Now, this is x plus one times x plus three. Now, for example, if you can break this one, you can compare this with a parabola. Now, the concept of parabola, you can understand from this. This is the parabola. You can know about y-intercept, you can know about the x-intercepts, the distance between the x-intercepts, what is the vertex. So if you can break this one very easily, then you can understand this parabola, the concept of what do you mean by y-intercept, what are the x-intercepts, what is the distance between the x-intercepts, what is the vertex. So all these can be understood right from factoring this particular algebra. If it is not factorizable, okay, then you can do differently. But if it is factorizable, you can do in a simpler manner. So these type of things, even while calculating the distance between two points, how the points are given, whether they, they are given with the ordinate same or the abscissa same, what is given? Here the ordinate is same. So directly the distance will be absolute value of 1 minus 10, which is 9, or absolute value of 10 minus 1, which is nothing but 9. So one has to know these skills he must have, the short tips. This comes only from the concept. This is not a shortcut where it, it, if it is like this, you have to do like this. But it comes from, even in, if you see a basic, for example, somebody asks you 6% of 50 in percentages. This is same as 50% of 6. 50% means half. Half of 6 is 3. So like this, if you can understand the skill here, 6% of 50 is same as 50% of 6. So that's why it will become very easy for the student to grab the line. And in circle equations also, in higher education, in 11th and 12th, he will understand what do you mean by a circle. So one has to understand directly how to write a circle equation when center and the radius is given, or when the extremities of the diameter is given, how to write the equation. So all these things he has to understand means first he has to understand the concept, then he can move with the, the problems, whatever they are given. Then uh, moving ahead, 
how to prepare for uh, performing well in competitive examinations. Now, the fast calculations which we uh, learn right from lower grades will be very helpful in competitive examinations. Like I told you, fractions, decimals, percentages. Now, even you have the calendar problems, you must know the calendar, the dates, what are the days and everything. Now, see, uh, if you check the, for any year, whether it's a leap year or non-leap year, the April and July will have the same days distributed with the dates. So this is the observation you have to do while seeing a calendar. Now, what do you mean by a leap year? Because this will be useful again uh, in uh, permutations and combinations and also in probability. Now, anyhow, in probability, once again, you see, the, again, these two are correlated chapters. Permutating combinations and probability are correlated chapters. In probability, you must, one must know about a coin, a dice, cards, everything. So here, the concepts which he understands, now, uh, when you can uh, perform well in complete examinations. Now, if you have most of the complete exams have MCQs. No, MCQs means multiple choice questions. No, to, for example, when the paper is given, see the problems which are very easily calculated. With, with your brain, you can calculate them. Uh, when you calculate them, you'll get the answer fast. And the rest of the problems, you can, uh, where uh, some calculations are needed there, you can uh, put all those things and then you can do those problems. For example, if you are uh, doing a problem and uh, you have something like a six two one zero 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 divided by eight zero eight. Now we know that this answer will come anyhow between uh, 7,000 to eight thousand. Now only let us suppose this is seven six eight five approximately. Now only one option is there. You can go to that option. So by eliminating the options, also you can solve the answer. So one has to know fast calculations for these. So that's why false calculations are very important for competitive examinations, whether it may be an SAT examination or an Aplan examination, what, wherever time-bound exams are there. Now first go through the paper, wherever easy questions are there, the, you can solve them mentally, you can solve them. And then the approach must be for the other problems, you have to put uh, some time where you, uh, there is some calculation, or there is some more calculations must be done to get the solution of the problem. So that is how you can solve those problems. Now moving ahead, understanding word problems. Now see, a lot of word problems are given right from lower grade to higher grade. Now even in lower grade, in addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, ratios, percentages, decimals. So whichever chapter you take, exponentiation. So you have word problems. Many students struggle with the word problems and this lowers their confidence during the exams. The word problems are mostly created uh, to simulate a real life situation so that uh, students can relate to them while solving, uh, solving those kind of problems. Most students get confused while reading and interpreting word problems. The best solution to it is to break the word problem into simpler parts. Take down the information given in each of the sentences of a word problem. Once you have all the information right there on your notebook, you will find it easier to understand the starting point of the calculation and the direction in which we have to move to solve the problem, a bird's view of the solution of the problem, you have to understand what is given, what is asked in the problem. The way to calculate the answer is always hidden in a problem itself. Now, generally word problems are asked in probability, in statistics, in exponentiation, in all these, uh, actually, word problems, they, include, they are included. For example, probability, let us suppose I can give you a problem like uh, how many uh, left-handers and right-handers are there in male and female. And the question may be how many uh, female left-handers are there in the total population. Like that, I can ask you a question. Statistics, if you can be asked in say, mean or you can be asked in median or some data will be given or more can be asked, range can be asked, standard deviation can be asked in that. Exponentiation, you have uh, the growth or the decay problems. So some data will be given and uh, you have to observe which type of uh, things are given in the problem and then you can understand the word problem to solve. Now moving ahead, analyze graphs. Now actually, uh, you must know a lot of graphs. How actually, see for example, 
uh, I I know about a graph y is equal to f of x equal to absolute value of x. This is the parent graph. This graph is a V-shaped graph. It is like this. Now, the graph, by seeing the graph, the student can understand that this is completely above x-axis and the range is nothing but including zero up till infinity can take all values. By seeing the graph, you can tell range. By seeing the graph, you can tell what is the domain of this graph. So many problems can be solved, not only drawing a parent graph, now how actually y is equal to f of x equal to absolute value of x plus one. It means you have to shift horizontally, now here one unit onto the left side and you have to draw the graph. Now absolute value of x minus one means it is a horizontal shift again here one unit if I take, it is shifting onto the right side. So how to shift the graph also you must know. For example, if you have uh, y is equal to absolute value of x plus one. So this is a vertical shift one unit. So here, now absolute value of x minus one. So it is a vertical shift, but it is a downwards like this. Or you have absolute value of two x. So it is a compressed graph. Absolute value of x over two. It is nothing but a graph which is expanded. So like this, you must know horizontal, vertical shifts, all these types of things. And now you must know what are logarithm graphs, logarithms. You must know trigonometric graphs, inverse trigonometry. So many problems can be solved if graphs are known. Now, sometimes very easily it will give you the solution for a problem if you know how to draw a rough sketch of the graph. So graphs are needed everywhere. Now, for example, if you take a linear graph, let us suppose I have drawn a line graph. Now, here it will tell you what is your y-intercept, what is your uh, x-intercept, mm -hmm. sorry. It will tell you what is your uh, y-intercept, what is your x-intercept, what is the slope of this graph. So you can interpret many things. What is the equation of this line? Everything can be found from this particular graph. So linear graphs, quadratic graphs, you must know uh, polynomials, some of the polynomials, cubic polynomial, how it is. So all these graphs will explain the solution to some of the problems. So graphs are very useful for a student. Moving ahead. Now, how is mathematics made interesting? Now, teaching max concepts with real life examples, that's what I told earlier. Now, a child will be directly, for example, if I have distributive property, Now, what is distributive property? One of the distributive property I can say is A times B plus C equal to A, B plus C. Now, simply if I introduce this directly to the student, the student may not be able to understand. So I have to tell a real life example. For example, there is a class consisting of uh, 10 boys and uh, five girls. I want to distribute uh, two chocolates to them each. So two times 10 plus five is nothing but two times 10. So this gives 20 chocolates to boys, two times five, that is 10 chocolates to girls. So totally I need 30 chocolates. So this is an example or the same example, I can put it like this. For example, I have a rectangle, 15 length, two width. My, actually my graph is, uh, my, this figure is not according to the scale. So I can break this one, this length to 10 and this to five. So 20 will be the area of this and 10 will be the area of this. Now total area will be 20 plus 10, that is 30. So this is another example where I can quote for distributive property. Now, not only this, for example, if I have two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. These are the corresponding angles. This is uh, when basic geometry is introduced in lower groups. But the same concept can be understood by the student as this is nothing but that because these two are parallel, 
the inclinations are same. So if a transversal is cutting, these are nothing but the inclinations. So that's why corresponding angles are nothing but the inclinations. Or one can understand, for example, you have a theorem in circles where the line drawn from the center, the line drawn from the center of the circle to a tangent, it will be always perpendicular. Why it is always perpendicular? Because it is the shortest distance. That's why it is always perpendicular. No, and uh, some more interesting concepts. Root 16 is there. Root 16 is always positive. It is not plus or minus 4. It is always positive. Now, you must know the difference between the graphs of y square equal to x and y is equal to root x. You can't square this one and get this one. You can't manipulate the function. For this, the graph is present only in the first quadrant. For this, the graph is present in both first and fourth quadrant. So there is a difference. So as you give x positive, your y is also positive. That is the meaning of uh, root 16 is only 4. But here in this case, if you take y square is equal to 16, so y square minus 4 square equal to 0, this can be written as y plus 4 into y minus 4 equal to 0, and you can have y is equal to plus or minus 4. There will be two solutions here. But here you have only one solution. So root, root gives you always positive answer. So this you can explain to a student by using graphs. So this is how max is interesting. And then uh, learn max the Turito way. In Turito, how we are going to learn? Learn concepts with uh, real life examples. That's what earlier I told you. Now, when, you, when a real life is explained for a, every concept, for example, when you introduce algebra, what do you mean by a variable? So, we, for example, you want to purchase for a brief pen, it is $10. For two pens, it is $20. For expense, there is a 10 times X dollars. So, real life example, if you can introduce, then it becomes easy for the student to understand. Engaging and active teaching and two-way interactions. Now, where continuously with the student, you, you can ask him whether he has understood the concept and there is a two-way interaction between the student and the teacher that a nexus is formed between the student and the tutor and then he can easily deliver the concept and wherever the student gets doubt he can ask freely that this i didn't understand so that then the teacher will explain in a different way how actually the student can understand this one eliminating misconcepts there are many misconcepts when Whenever some concept must be learned, you explain the misconcept. Now, you can explain, for example, root of 3 square plus 4 square is not 3 plus 4. You can't take square root for 3 square and square root for 4 square separately. Then you can explain it generally. Root of a square plus b square is not equal to a plus b. Now, then you can tell why when it is equal to a plus b, when a square plus b square plus 2ab, is there, then this becomes root of a plus b the whole square. And then it will become a plus b, provided a and b are positive. Otherwise, I have to put an absolute value here because I told you root is always positive. So clarifying the misconcepts, even in higher grades, when a functions chapter is introduced, what do you mean by a function? What do you mean by, this is not a function. Explain them by drawing Venn diagrams that why this is a relation only, it can't become a function. So misconcepts, so eliminating the misconceptions, this is very important for every student. And building confidence and uh, clarity. Now, see, for example, when the student, let us suppose, he answers wrongly to a particular question. So then uh, there must be some clarity from the teacher side that, say, this is a particular mistake you have done. So if you think in this direction, you won't do mistakes. So that, becomes, that gives a confidence to the student to move ahead and solve more and more problems uh, uh, to get a uh, very good subject from the teacher. Get motivation for both correct and incorrect answers. Now, see, uh, yeah, for giving incorrect answers, we are not demoralizing the student. So we can tell him why he is not correct, whether his concept is wrong or the direction of thinking, uh, the way he has uh, thought about to give the solution for the problem is wrong. So this can be eliminated uh, from the teacher. That is a benefit you can get from here. This is the fear of max by building interest. Many students, they have fear of max. So fear of max is only because either they, have been, they are not strong in the concepts which have, they have learned in right from the lower grades. So that if, can, if it is eliminated, 
then really he will develop interest in the subject. When, while, if he starts getting the solution of the problems, then he will start getting interest into the subject. That is very important. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. uh, thank you, sir, for giving your valuable insights on mathematical skills. Let's move into Q&A session, sir. It looks like yeah. Uh, yeah. we have a few questions from participants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, Ravi. How to manage time in computer exams? See here, actually, as I told you uh, in the beginning, uh, when you are uh, writing any computer examination, which is a time-bound examination, so first you can go through the paper, answer the problems which you can do with your uh, head. That is very important. Mental calculations. That skill you must develop. So then when while solving those problems first, identifying them and cracking the answers of those problems, then you can move ahead. Your time will be sufficient to answer the rest of the problems. So to manage time, this is the very important. And another way of managing time in competitive examinations is before uh, going to the main examination of any competitive examination, the student has to solve many papers so that we're keeping a time and solving the paper, that is very important. So that he can actually understand, and analysis must be made after uh, writing all those practice tests. You must have an analysis that is very important. You must analyze whether I got, why I got these questions wrong, whether I have made more time utilizing for those kind of questions, or my concepts are weak, or the way of answering the question was not accurate. So uh, practice makes a man uh, makes everyone perfect. So these type of uh, thinking, uh, uh, practicing papers and uh, seeing the paper, going through the paper, the easy problems first, and then going to the problems. Not hard, I will say. When a student is prepared, they may be uh, uh, more uh, problem solving where you have to solve where the, where the time will be consumed. So those type of problems you have to do in the last. First, you have to solve those problems which are very easy. That is how you have to do it. Now, coming to the second question, what is the best way to explain any max concept at home? So any real life example, that is very important because any formula from even I, when I give a formula to a student, he won't be able to understand. Any concept, it must be taken easily by the student. It must be like a fun. It must be like a game. So he has to understand that what is the logic behind it? Why this concept is there? So that real life example, when you put before the student, it will fix in his mind so that he will remember, like I told you about distributive property, A times B plus A is A, B plus A is A. So that can be remembered by the distribution of the chocolates to students, which I told you. So he will keep in his mind that example. So when he, when he gets, oh, this is the example which is linked to that particular thing. So like that, he can understand. And not only that, uh, be, because you have a lot of formulas coming uh, while having algebra or geometry, but revising them, as I told you, max formula book is needed. So have the formula book. For example, uh, the teacher uh, has started a particular chapter, write the chapter name, and write all the formulas which are coming and see that all these formulas are revised daily. Revised means uh, not learning through writing. Writing it on a piece of paper and correcting will make the max concepts strong. May, whether they may be concepts or pro of, uh, formulas or whatever it may be, but one must have that formula book and revising them daily is important. So coming to the third question, what is the best way to remember theories and formulas? That's what I told. So theories and formula, please uh, write uh, them uh, on a paper, revise them daily, uh, getting it corrected uh, on your own, uh, on, on, on the own the student can do or with the help of the parent or the teacher, if he does, then he will remember all the formula and theories. My child finds algebra hard, any tips on how to make him understand better? Yeah, this is a good question, which is linked to the previous questions also. Algebra actually, you get a lot of formulas, like uh, I told you in the beginning, A plus B the whole square, A minus B the whole square. So uh, for every, every, let us suppose I take A plus B the whole square. So you must give to the student a lot of problems based on it. For example, he must know, uh, let us suppose I give you a problem like 2A plus B the whole square. 
then he has to uh, understand what is x what is y how to write them and how the link of this formula how this formula is used for example if i give 101 the whole square it, it really it is difficult to multiply you, you, you may get it but how to use algebra in that you can write 100 plus 1 the whole square so that it becomes very easy for the student to revise the formula to understand that oh these problems can be done using algebra so like that algebraic formulas as you get these formulas revising them daily writing it on a paper that is very important so that is the tip by which i can give you now when will these classes start is a group coaching or individual coaching this will be answered by uh, yeah yeah priyanka sir priyanka is here yeah, yeah. hi priyanka could you please answer this question uh, can you please repeat my child finds Sorry, sorry. Uh, when, when will classes, classes start? Okay. Uh, so the classes are already ongoing and uh, we'll call you for the demo session and after the demo you can enroll your child and uh, we will be giving like uh, two classes in a week we generally provide. So the classes are ongoing. We'll contact you after the webinar uh, like within 24 hours. We'll get a call and we'll schedule the demo for the same. Thank you. Yeah, uh, one next more question. question Priya, it is how many classes per week? It's two classes in a week per subject generally. Uh, and the next question is, can you explain more about the classes and how they will be conducted? Uh, so we'll be call, uh, calling you and scheduling the demo. And uh, one day before the demo session, uh, the, you will get a Zoom link, uh, your ID and password for the Zoom link. And uh, one of the counselor, demo counselor will be in touch with you and you can join the class. And after the demo is done, we'll contact you like from the payment team, you'll be getting a call and uh, they'll give you a brief idea about the program and everything. And uh, you can discuss with the days and timings with the tutor as well. And once it is decided and enrollment is done, you can start the classes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next question is my question, I think. Uh, how to teach students decode the word problems independently? they tend to struggle to identify the type of operation before uh, to uh, require to solve this uh, the problem yeah and see as i told you word problems uh, when the word problem is given to the student he has to break the word problem he has to understand it uh, for example uh, b is uh, three more than one third of c let us suppose if i give this word problem b is means b is equal in two Three more than, three more than means it is addition. Three is added to what? One third of C. So when I say one third of C, it is not totally C which is added to three. So it is one third of C is added to three. So B is equal to one third of C plus three. So he has to recognize here uh, what is equal to what first. So B is equal to what? Three more than, three more than because I said anything more than means it is addition of three. One third of C means it is not totally three, it is one third of C. So B is equal to one third of C plus three. So one has to break the word problem, the sentence which is given, he has to break it and understand and uh, write the equation which is related to but that particular problem. And then he can solve the problem. Yeah, any other questions? Uh, no, sir. Uh, as of now, we are not getting any questions. I think we are good for now, sir. And yeah. thank you, sir, for explaining all the questions with patients and uh, giving tips to improve mathematical skills in students. And thank you, Priyanka, for explaining uh, the doubts uh, for the participants who were asked. And we'll be ending the session now. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to know more about Terito, visit our website www.terito.com. And if you have any queries, please feel free to reach us at care at the For better way of learning, join Terito. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.